All right, guys, I'm back uh, for part two of the catalytic converter uh, install, new catalytic converter. Uh, this is a 2009 Saturn Outlook, um, although this applies exactly the same to the Acadia, the Chevy Traverse, and the Buick Enclave, and I believe covers 2009 up to 2015 or 16 or so. Uh, feel free to correct me on that. That's... Uh, that's what I've read and heard. I don't know how accurate that is, but uh, anyways, if you at least got a 2009 or even 10 or 11, uh, same parts, same procedures, uh, same everything that goes on here. So in the first video, I just kind of went over what I was going to do and parts needed. I wasn't going to film the actual install itself, and this is kind of just a wrap-up to go over uh, how long it took and issues and problems and what you may run into if you try to do this yourself. Um, this ended up taking me almost seven hours. Um, I had to make a run to Home Depot, stop for some lunch and some dinner, and uh, otherwise it, actual labor probably took about six hours. Obviously, if you have a mechanic do this, it's probably not going to take them as long. Um, and unfortunately, I don't have the ability to put this up on a big hydraulic lift like at a mechanic's. Um, so getting under this is a little bit trickier, not as much room. Um, had I been able to get it higher up in the air, probably would have went a little bit quicker. Um, but anyways, everything is all done. We're all bolted back together. Um, one thing I did not show in the first video that I'll show you real quick here. Um, in order to get um, down to the uh, catalytic converter here, if you're changing this one out, to make this go easier up here in the engine compartment, you got to remove this brake vacuum pump. So you got two 10 millimeter bolts right here. They come out. You can move this and put this over here out of the way. Then you got to get the oxygen sensor out of the way. I was getting a new one, installing a new one anyway, so this was no big deal. Remove that. And then right down here, is a heat shield that blocks the exhaust manifold from all this harness and wire work. Um, that has three 10 millimeter screws that you need to remove and to get that out of the way. Um, not the, actually not the easiest thing to get to because the screws are kind of on an angle and they kind of angle themselves towards the radiator. So it's very hard to get um, a socket down in there. I had to use several extensions and kind of angle them um, so a little bit of a hassle, but, uh, it is what it is. Um, also you notice I took the big plastic cover off of here as well. May not necessarily be needed. Um, I just wanted to do it just to get it out of the way and opens up a little bit more room in here. Allows, allows light to shine in a little better. Um, so no big deal. If you don't want to remove it, you may not have to, and that's that. So as I said, this is a catalytic converter, um, uh, replacement. Uh, I was getting a P0420 code, which actually stood for Bank 1 catalytic converter. Uh, I believe they call it, I believe it was described low threshold might be the terminology for it. Um, bank 1 catalytic converter is technically the one back in here. This would be Bank 1 back here. Um, so as I mentioned in the previous video, I could have done just that and been done with it, but for the money I saved getting a three piece set and everything else, I said, let me just do them all. It's going to take longer, but everything's going to be brand new when it's done and hopefully last another hundred thousand miles or so. I probably won't have the car that long, but so let's go underneath and see what we did and go over what you'll need. For installation so as you can see here's the one catalytic converter this is the one that would be referred to as the left or also called radiator side um, little side note about this um, the one that was here you needed a 15 millimeter uh, socket to get it off here, and I believe it was, uh, might have been a 13 millimeter up top. 
This new one that came in that came with hardware is a 9 16th. So make sure when you're doing this job, make sure you have not only the 15 millimeter and the 13 millimeter, um, but that you also have 9 16 as well. Uh, part of this job, I also replaced this flex pipe. Once again, I didn't have to, but with the money I saved on the catalytic converter set, <clears throat> it just made sense. You have to unbolt it and get it out of the way to get to the other catalytic converters. Why not take it out and just replace it? Brand new oxygen sensor right there. Uh, that would be what's considered a downstream sensor because it's after the catalytic converter. Uh, and that would be on bank two. So bank two is a reference to the left side or the side facing the radiator. Now, one side note I did realize about getting this old flex pipe out of here. Let's see the flex pipe goes, goes over this bracket, goes down and bolts onto that catalytic converter down there, which then goes out to the muffler. I was hoping, I'm going to move this light a little bit. I was hoping that once I disassembled this, I would be able to just pull it out and be done with it. But it was not that easy because with this bend and this part, it would not go out here. So what you need is you need uh, the same 15 millimeter socket you've been using anywhere else. There's two bolts here, one here, one here, and one there. One there. This is just a, um, a metal plate that kind of bolts the two sides together. They're just they're very long bolts, screws that go up into the frame. Loosen them up. I loosened all four up, but these were the only two that I actually took out. Drop this down. Then I was able to get the flex pipe out. And then when I was ready to install the new one, fed it through, put the two bolts back in, cranked it back up done. So this was something I wasn't aware of at first until you get down here and you realize, oh, uh, I might need to do a little bit more work. So moving back, I go a little further back here. So now this flex pipe or Y pipe comes back. Sorry there. And that goes up to this catalytic converter. This is the one that would be uh, considered bank one or right side or sometimes called firewall. The different uh, vendors might call it different. Um, I think it was AutoZone when I was looking these up on AutoZone or uh, Pep Boys or one of them uh, calls it right firewall. Other... Uh, other places might call it bank one, but just as long as you know that bank one is also right side or firewall side. This is the one that was technically triggering my code, my P0420. I could have replaced just this, but decided to do everything. This was the hardest of the three to do because uh, the, the three bolts were bolts onto the exhaust manifold are all the way up in there and very hard to get to. Um, and I think that's what made it this job take seven hours for me instead of less. Uh, this is my first time ever doing a big job like this on my car. So um, I did not expect it to go smoothly. Uh, one thing that will make this easier. If I can see if I can turn the light on it. Apologize here, I'm trying to do too many things at once. So, right there, see that screw, that bolt? That's holding on a piece of metal. That metal is a heat shield that goes up. You can see a little bit more of it back there. There's two heat shields up here. Um, this is one of them. This guy's one of them. And there's another one. It's 
hard to see from this angle, but trust me. Uh, there's another one up in there. If you take those two out, it makes this a lot easier. Um, both heat shields are held on with 10 millimeter screws. So the, sen the same 10 millimeter one you were using earlier to take out um, the heat shield and the vacuum pump up front, uh, you can use to get these heat shields off and then it makes it a lot easier to get up to those three bolts uh, where the catalytic converter attaches to the manifold. So then our Y piece, our flex pipe comes back and it goes into this. This is the third and last piece of the catalytic converter set. Uh, this is where it bolts onto the pipe that then goes back to the muffler. Uh, this one started to go out, go off smooth um, until I got to these two bolts on my original one. Uh, they were so rusted that the one broke off. Um, luckily, it's still, it, it, it was, I was still able to get it out because it, it where it was attached to, um, it was attached to the old piece so it was easy to just pull off. Um, the other one was so, so stripped that I had to go out to Home Depot and get a special uh, bolt extraction uh, socket. Um, so I would advise that if you're going to do this job, have some have some bolt extractions uh, sockets on you just in case. Um, especially you got a 10-year-old car um, and you got some bad rust. Some of these might be very hard to break even with a, you know, a breaker bar. Um, so, but that ended up working, and actually that one snapped off as well. Um, so, that's that. And then this catalytic converter also has this little rod that comes up and goes through. That's just a little mount that holds it in place. Um, the old one was a little tricky getting off because on the end of the rod it had a, a wider, fatter piece that kind of, I guess, holds it in place. So trying to back that out of this holder was a little tricky, but the new one doesn't have it, so it slid right in. So there we go. Three new catalytic converters, new flex Y piece. Um, also, that's that's a new sensor as well. Um, this would be downstream bank one. Uh, once again, because I was pulling out the old pipe, um, might as well throw on two new sensors back here up front uh, and then have everything brand new and good to go. Everything should now pass emissions. Um, a little side note about this. If you're going to put in a new Y piece, a new flex piece, and you're going to put in two new sensors on it, put them on out on your table or before you install this. Um, this way you don't have to reach up in here and try to tighten it down after everything is installed. Um, it's easier to do it when you're not under the car. So that's that. Uh, feel free to comment, question, um, point out any issues, any, uh, if you have any tips that will make this easier for anyone else watching, uh, feel free to include them. Um, for my first job, I can't complain. It took long, but it's done. Um, and like I said, parts and labor, I'd say when all said and done, anywhere from five to 600 for me to do it, um, probably would have been about 1500, give or take, if a dealer did all this same work. I'm sorry, if a mechanic did all this work and, uh, if a dealer like a Chevy dealer or any GM dealer did this, it could have been closer to 2000 So to save yourself at least 1000 bucks plus, it is worth it. Um, do it. Try it. See if it works for you. Um, one last time, this should, this should exactly apply to not only the Outlooks, but the Acadias, the Traverse, and the Enclave. So hopefully this video helps you all. Um, it helps shows, um, at least Saturn, that Saturn is the same as the others. You don't see too many videos on Saturns. Um, 
and good luck with this. You can do it. Uh, save the money and uh, make sure you have all the tools and don't have to make a Home Depot run like I did. Uh, otherwise, thanks for watching and I hope this helps. Have a good day.